So we are leading up to no, no, no. This is the most important part of the entire podcast leading up to the uh, fantasy football season. Gage's rage has a new segment that he wants to do. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So it's tough for a lot of us to believe and understand being that we've all been involved with fantasy football for fuck a decade plus, I'd say for all of us at least. But there are people that maybe are just getting into fantasy football, football as a whole in general. So what I want to bring up is fantasy football 101. Gage's Rage takes you to class. Uh, oh, we're going to start banner. it off. Wrong Woo! banner. <laughs> same thing, though. Same difference. Same thing. <laughs> we're going to start, start it off with just glossary, uh, a, a general term base to get you started. If you know nothing about fantasy football, some terms you're going to hear a lot tonight to make you feel a little bit more comfortable. Uh, I thought the first one off the top of my head is PPR. You hear it all the time. It's super common. Uh, if you don't hear PPR in your fantasy league, get the fuck out of that league because that's a trash league. PPR stands for points per reception. Oh. And a reception is a catch. So you get one point for every catch. Some leagues are half PPR, half point per catch. And some leagues do one and a half PPR for tight ends. Yeah, and that would be a tight end premium league. Yep. There's also a difference between leagues in general. There's a league where you'll draft every single year where we call that redraft. Yep. Yearly. Yep. Yearly redraft leagues. There's also a league where you keep your entire team. Dynasty. Dynasty. There's also separate leagues where you keep specific players. Keeper leagues. Yeah. They all have their own quirks. They all have their own differences, and they all bring great stuff that you love about football. Uh, Dynasty, you're looking at really long-term, young players, lots of value. Um, yearly, maybe you're looking at a player like Tom Brady, who's somehow got some more fuel in the tank, but is going to sling a few touchdowns and, and do some stuff this season. Uh, the value changes on where you're taking, guys. You might look at a player like... I mean, Tom Brady is a good example, you know, a little bit older, but maybe we look at tight ends like Travis Kelsey is still a top tight end, but eventually that tide's going to turn. He's what, like 32, 32, 32, 32 in season. So 32, which is, you know, getting up there for a tight end. So you might be looking more along the lines of a younger guy that might be able to step up. Kelsey still has the most value, but at a certain point that's going to peak where he could have a really good year next year. But after that, you see a tank. So you're going to see younger players have a lot more value to you because you're looking two, three, five years down the road. And, exactly. Uh, PPR leagues specifically. Most websites that you go to, if you're looking for uh, like ranking sheets, they'll give you uh, PPR, half PPR, and standard. Some don't do the half. Some will just do standard and PPR. But I think it impacts the most is the running back position. Uh, PPR Huge. leagues lift up all the running backs in the entire league, but specifically guys like Austin Eckler, Miles Sanders, Alvin Kamara, Alvin Kamara, mm -hmm. guys that get 40 to 60 catches a year. And I would actually Christian argue McCaffrey. it doesn't lift everyone. There's guys like Chubb who are amazing running backs, but don't catch the ball that much. Maybe 30 a year. Maybe. Maybe if he's lucky. Derek and then Henry. they have an excellent running back in the backfield like Kareem Hunt to pair him. Uh, where they're both viable in a PPR league in their own ways. Uh, Naheem Hines, a guy that really is a no-namer, third-down specialist, but in a PPR league can get you in a pinch. He's an RB2 in a PPR league. <laughs> J.D. Absolutely. McKissick was an RB1 last year based on the amount of passes he caught. Out it's of insane. So PPR is excellent. It gets higher scores. It gets just a lot more players involved in uh, a starting lineup and who you should be playing. And it, it and makes it more fun. It's easy math, too, when you're adding up. You're looking at a player like, oh, he got eight passes for 100 yards and a touchdown. You're like, oh, that's 16. That's eight. Yep. 24 boom, boom, points. Boom. 20 points just like that. So, yep. so that is <clears throat> Fantasy 101, week one. We're going to be bringing it to you, uh, I think, a whole lot more. Hopefully, it just keeps going. Every single it, week leading up to the season, we will uh, get into the preseason fantasy 101s. But during the season, we can get into it just talking about general ads and drops, money you should be spending on certain players, yada, yada, yada. There's so much about fantasy football. There's still terms I'm learning day after day, year after year. Scott didn't even know what a dick for a league was. It's true. I don't know what the dick for is for. We've got, I don't even know, 30, 35, 40 years of fantasy football experience right here. I've yeah. got 15 myself. 
Yeah, like I've been playing, playing fantasy football since I was like 14, so 13 years. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, I was, tw- I think, 12 in my first league. And so you're aging yourself. You're 15. That's That was my first email account was created for fantasy football i remember a lot of the guys that i look up to in the fantasy world they remember actually going through the newspaper and actually manually writing down who scored what for points and tracking it that way so it's come a long ways we've been on the computer generation our entire lives yep um 